Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about MapReduce. And while I haven't used MapReduce too much in my young life, I have been doing a decent amount of just reducing lately, as I've managed to reduce the number of girls that I'm speaking to, to zero. This has been the case for about the last year. Anyways, let's get into MapReduce. Okay, if you would believe it, I just recorded this entire thing without actually using my iPad, so now I have to do it again. All right, so what is MapReduce? Well, basically MapReduce is also part of that whole Hadoop distributed computing environment. And what it allows us to do is perform these massive batch computations on data that actually lives in Hadoop and is basically already stored in HDFS. So how do we do this? What's so useful about MapReduce? Well, a couple of really big things. For starters, as opposed to just like running a massive SQL pipeline, we can actually run arbitrary code via defining a mapper and reducer function. We'll touch upon what those mean in a little bit. Additionally, we can actually run computations on the nodes that hold the data. This is huge for data locality, and it's really important in terms of ensuring good performance. And then finally, to kind of give you some of the lore of MapReduce, basically this thing was created in the early 2000s, and it was created to basically run on servers that were probably running other jobs or other processes at the same time that were a lot more important than the batch jobs that MapReduce was running. And so as a result of that, the entire system is basically built to be super resilient to failures, where if you know just one node or just one part of this batch job fails, we only have to restart that failed part as opposed to restarting from scratch, which is hugely important when you have so many failures and so many preempted tasks. Okay, so let's move on to mappers and reducers. What are they? If you're not familiar with functional programming, maybe this will be useful for you. Otherwise, sorry for wasting your time. So let's imagine that I have like a username, or rather a bunch of usernames, and I have a message that they sent. And basically we want to say, okay, for every single one of these username message combos, give me the user ID and give me the length of the message. That's really all a mapper is doing. It's just some arbitrary function that takes in an unstructured log and then spits out some type of key value combo that you basically want for every single line of that log. Should be simple enough. The next one is going to be a reducer. So a reducer is going to take many of the outputs from a mapper all for the same key and it is going to spit out just one value, right? So rather than really list key value, it should kind of be a key and a list of values. And what it's gonna do is spit out a single value. So in this case, you know, we can see we, the key is going to be 21, the list of values is going to be 15, 10, and five. And what it's going to do is, let's say this is a reducer that computes the average of those values. So it's say 15, 10, and five, you know, take the sum of those and then divide by three, and that's how you get 10, and that is our value up there. So that's kind of what the reducer is doing. So basically by just defining a mapper and a reducer, we can express all sorts of complicated functionality, and later in the video I'll express how to you know, do basically even more than that. So let's look at the actual MapReduce architecture. Effectively, and I'm gonna get rid of this here because it was from the last time I recorded, sorry about that. Imagine we've got these three nodes in our Hadoop cluster. What this graph is basically showing is through the stages of an individual MapReduce job, how the actual data looks different on every single node. So to start, we've got all this unformatted data on disk. And basically, the job there is to convert it somehow to a more standardized format that's useful to us. And obviously, that's going to be the job of the mapper. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of different types of keys and values that are mapped out of each log line. It's worth noting that if you see something like K3 on two different nodes, that means they have the same key, but probably a different value. So we start with all of these mapped values, and then what we're actually gonna do is sort them. And I'll explain in a little bit while we do that. But the gist is that now that we have all of these sorted values, we can perform this important step right here, which is the shuffle. So how do we actually decide, you know, something like, oh, you know, K3 from this node goes over to node three? Well, actually we would take the hash of the key and then we would basically go ahead and send those down to the other node. Now the reason that it's very nice that we can actually have our keys be sorted is because now what we're doing is sending two sorted lists down to every single node or actually even possibly multiple sorted lists 
And now we can perform an O of N merge join because we want to keep our keys sorted on the reducer. And I'll explain why that is on the next slide. So again, shuffling is literally just partitioning. It's taking a hash of every single key and sending it to the proper node so that it can be reduced. Now remember that reducing is basically saying, okay, we have multiple values corresponding to the same key. Let's compress them down to just one value. So now we're running our reducing function. As you can see, there's only one K6 now with a certain value. And before there were two K6s. Obviously, in the case of K19, there was only one key, or rather one value with K19 to begin with, so it's just going to stay like that in the reduction phase. And then finally, the entire point of MapReduce is to get data that we can store back in HDFS, and so as a result, the last step is materializing. And this is going to be in disk, and then go back to HDFS, get replicated, all that good stuff. So again, I keep mentioning that we were doing some sorting because we want our data on our reducer to be sorted. So keep in mind, this guy is the reducer right here. So let's explain why we actually want that. Let's imagine that this is my reducer and the reduction function that I want to do is perform the sum of the values for each key. So we have to perform that in memory, right? So to start, it would be like, oh, A starts as 6. Now we're adding 8 to it, so it's 14. And now we're adding 10 to it, so it's 24. Since we can now see, oh, B is three, okay, now I no longer need to store the value 24 in memory, I can just say to disk. Because I know that we're done computing this value since we started seeing a new key. Same thing goes with B, I can start with three, then go to 10, and then go to 14, and then I can flush it to disk, which is what MapReduce is eventually going to do. If our data is not sorted, then we don't actually know when we've seen the end of a given key and we don't know when we can flush to disk. So it would look something like this. B is three, now B is seven. Oh wait, now we have A is six, A is 16. And then again, B is now becoming 14 and A is becoming 24. Keep in mind that there might even be a bunch more keys here and yet we can't flush any of these values to disk. We have to keep them in memory. And what that means is that if we have a ton of keys, it is a ton of extra memory overhead, which can really affect the performance of our batch job, which is why it's so useful to keep things sorted. Okay, finally, let's talk about job chaining. So as of now, we can just have one mapper function and one reducer function. But what if we want more advanced functionality than that? Well, keep in mind that every single MapReduce job is literally just going from data on disk to different data on disk. And so there's no reason that we can't take this data right here and then do another job where we go from data on disk to data on disk. And that's effectively what we're doing right here. In theory, you can just chain infinite MapReduce jobs together. You know, it might obviously be slow, but it's worth noting that you can do this. And that's what a lot of people will end up doing. So let's quickly conclude on MapReduce so I can get myself into the gym. Basically, it is a super, super useful framework in terms of making big data batch jobs that we eventually want to be running on a schedule. If we wanted to run them in real time, again, that would be more like stream processing. Um, but again, batch processing is something that's still extremely common. All the time we have, you know, like daily jobs that we want to be running. And so something like MapReduce is super useful. We can express even more complicated functionality in MapReduce via both data joins, which we'll probably cover in the next video, and also job chaining. And then finally, it's worth noting that even though MapReduce is an extremely fundamental aspect of today's computing landscape, in reality, it's actually not used that much. And there are some pretty major flaws with its design that make it a little bit less feasible than some alternatives. And of course, within the next few videos, we'll be doing a deep dive in that as well. So stay tuned, guys. I will see you in the next ones and have a great night.